Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. And if you're on New Year, please hit subscribe. Show your girl some love and support on this channel, my channel. What's up? Um, I didn't know like what to make. Like, like I have some ideas, but like sometimes I just I forget what what to, what to talk about. Um, and I decided want to try to try to do um, a reaction video. So I got my earphones in and I want to react to um, Selena Gomez presents What I Wish You Knew Living Undocumented um, where she is, um, how do you say she's a, I think she's a producer or executive producer, um, yeah, she's an executive producer, but <laughs> on Netflix about immigrants, you know, being undocumented and how, you know, what it feels like and how what she wishes for you guys to know about it you know and the struggle to um to live undocumented basically and it's really hard and it the when i know that this is gonna be very sad and it's gonna like to me it's gonna feel really heartbreaking so i'll try my best to this make this reaction video I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do like two different ones to so see which one I like best, whether it's screen recording or record right now and then add the clip later. I'm just like, how do people do that? I always like wonder, like, it's so hard to do like um, reaction videos. Like, I didn't understand how to do it at first. Like, I did it before, but then I forgot how to do it, so I'm doing it now and I'm just trying to remember how I did it before. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I wanna react to some stuff that looks like, important stuff that matters like i'm not i'm not gonna react to like um music videos or whatever maybe like like youtuber youtubers music videos once in a while but like stuff like uh immig immigration um lgbt um people that have been through so much in life history um people that that get discriminated against no matter what gender your race um sexuality etc that's the stuff I want to react to, and this is something that Selena Gomez is is a, is a part of, and I'm like, wow, like she just is a genuine person, has a big heart, and I just can't wait to go react to it. I'm sorry if I talk too much. <laughs> so, oh yeah, this is a new cardigan. It's a new one I got. I have like one, two, three, like three more that I got. This one, and I have this one. It's like a maroon color, and I have one that's like a mustard mustard yellowish color and one that's green and I love it so and it keeps me warm and I like it just to wear the comb that keeps me comfortable so <laughs> let's get into this video okay I'm gonna react on my laptop and like I'm gonna listen to it while I'm like recording this thank you so much for being vulnerable and sharing your story being able to experience it through your eyes was mind-blowing, extremely heartbreaking. So, thank you. What's happened in your lives since, you know, participating in this documentary series? Well, so for my brother and I, at this moment in time, we don't really feel safe in this country. Mm -hmm. We don't feel welcome, and it does seem like time is running out for us. <laughs> Our appointment with ICE, it was postponed indefinitely. So we were just kind of in this limbo. We didn't know what was going on. My father was detained, and a week later, he was deported to Colombia. I didn't even get to say bye to him. He just left for work, like normally. And I got a call saying they got him. At that point, I think everything, everything changed. Because I never imagined in a million years that they would actually detain him. Yeah. That, you know, this was something that they were only going to do to people who committed crimes, to murders, to you know, whatever. We're not safe in our house anymore. I haven't been in my house in a month. I haven't slept in my bed. Just, it doesn't make any sense. My dad went through hell for eight days in these detainment centers. I think everybody at this point sort of has an idea of what's going on. They have people locked up in these cages, essentially. They sleep on the floors with these aluminum blankets uh, in these rooms. They have the lights on 24 hours a day. Being able to speak with him after the eight days that he was there, I had never heard uh, the pain that he had in his voice ever in my life. 
I think he will be damaged by that experience, just being there for eight days for the rest of his life. Uh, it was an absolute hell. And, you know, they're telling us that, you know, they're, they're going after us and that, you know, we could possibly be in the same situation. Yeah. This, this country is, it's not livable for us anymore. <laughs> Hearing all these things really ruins your determination to stay. It really just makes you think, like, no. that could be me, no. that could be my parents, that could be my siblings. And you don't want that. What's the point in pushing so hard if all you're going to get is that? What do you guys think that you would be doing um, if you didn't have to worry about this? I think about this every day. If this wasn't happening, I'd be going through school, just working hard to achieve what I want to achieve, which is being a civil engineer. I'd be living a normal life. I'd be living the life that my next door neighbor does. Right, right. It's nothing crazy, right. but it's what I dream of. We've never been able to travel anywhere outside of the country because ICE has our passports, and the only way we can get out of this country is through them deporting us. In Israel, I have so many cousins, so many aunts and uncles and nieces and nephews, and I feel like it's come to the point where like, I don't know if I will ever meet them, and I know a lot of my friends are best friends with their cousins, or they get to go to Israel for vacation. Like, I'm missing out on so much. Personally, hearing all of these things that you guys are not able to enjoy about the country that I live in is very difficult. What do you guys think that you're missing out on? The ability to simply go to school is the most important thing to me. It has been a struggle. We don't sleep at night. Just a million scenarios run through my head every day. I got robbed last week. I was scared to call the police because I didn't know, could they track my family? Would they get in touch with my parents? Would they come to my house? Would they want to see like who's there? They basically don't exist. What is your biggest fear? To have this adrenaline every single day, to be scared every single day for the rest of my life, that nothing will ever change. My biggest fear is being detained and going through what my dad went through. I literally had a nightmare last night about being dropped off in a country that I've never been yeah. to really since I was three, that I, I wouldn't even know where I was standing. With all of this fear that you guys have to live with every day, do you find that it's really hard to trust people? I've kept it a secret. I like to represent myself as Colin because that's what I am. But people never really assume that I don't have a status in this country. When we received news that our private bill was taken away and we were left without status, my biggest fear at the time was I was going to leave without anyone knowing what happened to me. So I made a crazy decision to just tell my friend Brian. He was someone that was very open to it and made me feel very comfortable um, talking to someone. And if it wasn't for that conversation, I don't think I would have ever spoken to someone about it. So, yeah, it makes me cry just because of how special that moment was, and we got really close because of it, but it was definitely hard at the time. I want people to know about my situation. I need people to know about my situation, <laughs> and yeah, so yeah. You're good, thank you. You really got me going here. Yeah. When it came to high school, it would bring up a lot of questions. Everyone would always ask, why don't you have your license? Why don't you have a car? Why do you keep moving houses? If a question came up between a close friend and I, I wouldn't hide it from them because I, I feel like, yes, it is hard to find people you trust, but it depends on like how long you've known them or what their situation is, what their beliefs are. Do you feel American? You know, yes. like how would you describe yeah. that feeling? I feel like you couldn't get any more American than mm -hmm. most four at the dinner table right now. I feel like I am an American. I've lived here my whole life. Yeah. I was six months old when I moved. I don't know anything but here. Exactly. Exactly. The place that they grew up in. Yeah. It's. I don't want anyone to experience that. No. I just want America as a whole to know and understand what's really happening when these people are getting deported. They don't just get a plane ticket and say like bye like go back to your old life. You don't have an old life anymore. 
this is what we have. Yeah, I don't know what else I would be considered. I have Colombian family who would, you know, tease me. They see me as American. I speak English. My Spanish isn't, you know, the strongest. Oh, I've lived here since I was three. You're not. That's, that's my whole life. What no, you see on the exactly. news is not really what's happening. They're trying to label exactly. me You're looking at, you're going to be looked at differently. We're not a threat to society. We're simply just being looked at differently and portrayed as an enemy. There's millions of us here, and mm. you don't hear about, yeah. I would say, 99% of them, simply because these are people who just come here looking for a better life, and they're working and they're minding their own business. I feel like we've been given the stereotype that immigrants have come here to sell drugs, to rob, to hurt, to steal, to do all these terrible things, when in reality, we've come here to live a safer life. And instead of looking at us as people who want to take from you, Look at us as people who want to be with you. We want to be able to work together. I really hope that the fight doesn't end with us leaving. I hope that the fight continues to the point where this country welcomes us with open arms and sees us for who we really are. We really just want to make sure the story is known. And at the end of the day, that's all that really matters to me is that <laughs> this doesn't happen to other families. I hope for my family yeah. to uh, one day live in a place where we're completely accepted and we don't feel constant fear. And I hope that this country comes to realize the just complete injustice that's being done and that one day we can just live in America that is open to immigrants and lives up to its values of freedom and liberty. You guys have given me hope. There are beautiful people in this world that do you want this country to change and to improve and seek logic in the situation? What do you hope for the future of America? <laughs> for us? <laughs> well, a huge part of why I wanted to be a part of, of this is to also be a voice for so many people who can't and are terrified to speak about it. I don't even think people realize that my family also as a background. My grandparents yeah. were immigrants. Um, and to just think about the life that I've been given and how blessed I am. See a change. My hope is that I see change. We're all in this together. <laughs> Doesn't end here. I just think you are wonderful people. <sighs> and I want you to stay. That was so, like, the stories are like that, really heartbreaking. But seriously, this world, like, things have to change. You know, we have to get better. Like, like Selena said, if she thought that if maybe she could shine a light on this, you know, that maybe people could be more compassionate and not spread so much hate and judgment. <laughs> My opinions on immigrant immigration and dreamers, you know, people that um, want a better life, a better future for their family, just because like, you can't assume that every person of, of does not, like, you know, of, of, of the U.S. citizen is bad. People, even people that are U.S. citizens are bad. So you just, like, this is, it's not fair. Like, you know, my land is your land, you know? Like, we're all together, not just, like, white people. Everybody. It's everyone. Everyone together, included, no matter what you are, what skin color, your race, um, gender, identity, um, disability, et cetera, et cetera. People can't be illegal and should not be illegal. And it's not fair, it's not right. They have feelings too, they are human. All I see is a human being. So, so thank you guys for watching this video. Subscribe to my channel for more videos. Links down below. Um, for in for Instagram, you know, follow me on Instagram. 
for more playlist videos are down there just just check them out links down below um subscribe and hit the bell to let you guys know whenever i upload the video which is like very 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 randomly um subscribe hit the bell you guys you know show some love and support and please like this video positive comments if you have nothing nice to say don't say it at all just like bye if you don't want if you don't want if you don't if you don't care about immigration and their rights and you know how they deserve to have a better life and all that stuff like if you don't care about that just don't even watch like don't comment anything negative just like don't only positive comments so yeah bye guys